Hello and welcome to part 2 of my video series on how we can interface Arduino with Python. In part 1 we went over the basics. We set up our Arduino and our Python code and we got them talking. In part 2 we'll go over some more enhancements on how we can build on the foundation that we set up with part 1. Here's a look at our updated Arduino code. It's pretty similar to that which we looked at in part 1, however there's a major functional difference. The code used in part 1 outputs serial data all the time. In this set of code, we're going to only output data when we request it. And this will be by looking for a certain character, in this case G, and once we receive G, we're going to return a data point. This gives us a lot more control over code. With that being said, let's examine this code from top to bottom. We start out by declaring our variables. We have the analog pin, which is the analog input to the Arduino, and we're assigning it the third pin. Then we have data, which is going to be the data that's coming off the Arduino. And last, we have char user input. This is going to be the character that we're looking for to signal when we want to transmit a data point. Then we move on to the void setup, which establishes our serial connection and our baud rate, which is 9600. Moving into the void loop, we enter the main section of our code. Remember, the goal is to add more control. We only want to get information when we request it. And that's what the first main if statement does. It monitors if we get a user input. And if we get a user input, it executes the codes within the main if's parentheses. And if not, it just waits until it does get one. It does nothing. To determine if we get a user request to get a data point, we're going to utilize the available function. What this available function does is returns the amount of information that's on the serial input buffer. It returns the number of bytes that it received. So if the value of serial.available is not greater than zero, it means we did not receive any bytes or any user information. Once serial.available becomes greater than zero, we know that we have information on the serial buffer. So we want to execute the lines within the parentheses. We first encounter a serial.read. What this does is reads the first byte that's on the buffer and assigns it to user input. With user input, we now know what is on the buffer and we compare it to a known value. That's what the second if statement does. It compares the user input to the letter G, and if it's equal, it reads the data point off the Arduino's third pin, which is assigned to data. And then once we get that data, we print it to the serial bus. Now that we've gone through this code, let's take a look at the result. I'll pull up the Arduino IDE serial monitor. Notice how the data is no longer free streaming. We're only outputting data when we get the input of the character G. And if this input is not the character G, we ignore the input. Now that we've updated our Arduino code and confirmed that the updates work, let's move on to the Python code. This Python code can be thought of as automating the Arduino serial monitor. The main functional difference in this set of code is the fact that we're requesting the data point. And this is done by using the serial write command. We're going to write the letter G in order to get a data point from the Arduino. Let's take a look at this new functionality. I created a function called getValues. This function is responsible for requesting, reading, then returning a data point. The first line, serial write, is writing the letter to the serial bus. Notice that inside the write function, there is the letter G but it's prefixed by the letter B. This is to signify that we're writing a byte to the serial bus. The following line is the Arduino data assignment. We're going to save the data point to Arduino data. We're going to utilize the readLine function, which reads the serial information coming off the bus until the end of line character, which by default is the new line character. Then we're going to decode it. This is to format the data into something more useful, 
and to strip out the raw data's information. Finally, we're going to return the Arduino data. So when we call the getValues function, we get the data point. We then move into the main part of the code, which is in the while true loop. We're going to assign user input the input function. The input function prompts the user for a response. And then once we get a response back, it saves that value into user input and executes the code below it. Once we receive a user input, we're going to hit the if statement. The if statement compares user input to a known value of the character y. If the user input equals the character y, then we're going to call get values and print it. So we're going to print the Arduino data point that we collected. Let's run this code and review the results. Notice that we're prompted if we want to get a data point. If the user input is y, then we receive one. If not, we ignore the results. It has to be a single y character. Thank you for watching. The main takeaway from this video is how you can add control to your Arduino and your Python code. This was done by only getting data points when you ask for them. Also, a secondary effect that was a benefit was increased error handling. We rejected user inputs that were invalid. Thank you again for watching and stay tuned for more content. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section.